everybody. It's great to see you again. Thank you so much for joining us for our Facebook Live Bible study. This is a new study. We haven't seen you for a couple of weeks, so really looking forward to um, connecting with you again. We're going to be studying being a disciple, counting the real cost. And I'm delighted that we have Susan Downey joining us this week. Susan's a, a friend of ours from here in Salisbury, and uh, Susan's obviously on the sofa, and uh, we're going to enjoy a, a great discussion Thank today. You. Looking yes. forward to it. So just a reminder, if you haven't got a copy of this book, you'll be able to get one later. The details will be underneath the screen. Um, grab your Bible if you haven't. Susan's got her um, Bible with her, but she's obviously got a book as well. But grab a Bible, grab a pen, and uh, you can follow along with us. So just to let you know a little bit about this study, this is an eye-opening study that will bring us face to face with what it means to deny ourselves and follow Christ. And as we better understand the distinctive marks of a true disciple, we're going to be challenged to follow Jesus into radical living and discover the blessings that come from complete surrender. It's a challenging study, but it's a very needful study. So. Okay, so let's get, uh, get, get, get straight on with, uh, with the study. I'm just going to pray. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to meet. Mm. Father, we just pray that you would bless each uh, person uh, that's engaged with us today or in the days ahead as they watch this back, Father, that you would bless them, that you would instruct them, and Father, that uh, we would live in light of what we learn. We ask this in your name. Mm. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I'm going straight to the uh, first paper that says, Being a Disciple Counting the Cost. I'm just going to read that, and then we're going to get straight on with week one. When Jesus called men and women to follow him, what did he expect of them? And was it reasonable? What's the difference between those who say they're Christians and everybody else? What proves whether a person is a true disciple of Jesus Christ or not? These are the questions that we want to search out as we see what the Bible says about the subject of being a disciple of Jesus Christ. We're going to take an inductive approach which means that you are Sorry. going to observe <laughs> the word of God for yourself. That's why you need a pen or a pencil. Uh, this is not just you watching us, but we want you to be engaged with us as well. Uh, then having observed the word for yourself, you'll then discover what it says and means, and you can determine if you want to live your life according to its truth. So, over the page, uh, and I'm just going to read, if you've got the book, just the last couple of paragraphs from week one before we get going. A disciple is a follower. Moses had disciples, the Pharisees had disciples, John the Baptist had disciples. When Jesus began his public ministry, he too looked for disciples, so that when his work was finished and he left to be with his father again, there would be others who would faithfully carry on the work of the kingdom of God, a kingdom that was now at hand. So, we are going to start by looking at, at a passage uh, that shows us how Jesus first called his disciples. Uh, if you haven't got a book and, and um, you're following through on your Bible, you need to turn to Matthew chapter 4 and starting at verse 17. And the first little section is going to take us up to verse 22. So that's Matthew chapter 4, verses 17 to 22. Hope you've got your pens and pencils ready. Okay, so I'm going to read these verses aloud. And uh, I'm going to ask you to mark the word follow with an arrow under the word follow with uh, an arrow pointing to the right. And actually there's a, that's a really good point because the translation that we use is the New American Standard Version. That's the translation we'll be reading from today. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't got that, it's a different version, um, obviously you need to mark the word that, that would best fit the word follow. Um, so that's why we would encourage you to, to get one of these books so that you can follow along um, accurately with us. Okay, so here we go. So Matthew chapter 4 starting at verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, as Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow, follow me. So, that's so underline that word there. Word, yeah. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed. followed. Him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, in the boat with Zebedee their father, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed, followed. him. Okay, 
Right, uh, I'm on page four, maybe you've got the book. Uh, I'll go where it says discuss. Now, when Jesus asked them to follow him, what did he say that he would make them? And this is where marking is really important because we've marked, um, we're going to be able to see where we need to go back and dig a bit deeper. And just a reminder, do please put your comments under the screen and we're going to be answering those comments as we go through. Or if there are any questions you have, we'll answer them at the end. So I think verse 19, Susan, was the first he, yeah, place, he wasn't says, it? He said, follow me, I will make you fishers of men. Hmm. Okay, so for those of you who've got a book, you may want to write down there. We always put the, the verse down as well. So verse 19, uh, fishers of men. Uh, okay, the next question is, what had they been doing? And where do we see that? Well, I think that's verse 18, because Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, and they had been fishing. They'd they, been casting their nets, hadn't yeah, they? Yeah, and here? it says in 20, immediately they left their nets. Mm. So they were obviously pulling their nets in after fishing. Yeah. yeah so um, verse 19, what had they been doing? Casting their nets into the sea. 18. Uh, they were fishermen. Verse 18, yep. Yeah and uh, they'd be mending the nets, so that's what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next question is, what do you think Jesus meant by fishers of men? What do you think, Susan? Because <laughs> Jesus always relates to us where we're at, or when we, we, when we see him in, in the, the um, gospel stories, he always yeah. connects with people where they're at, so he's obviously talking to fishermen. Yeah, I, th I think he's just highlighting the fact that what they're doing at the moment has a, a value on earth, and that they're fishing for food. But actually, there is a greater value to be had, and you can actually go out and fish people. Mm. And it sounds a bit, a bit crude, really, to go <laughs> fishing people. But literally, just that Jesus is after our hearts, so that He's saying you're going to go after people's hearts. You're fishing after men. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, very good. Okay. So we've got a great question here. Um, have the group, and that's you there watching, uh, share in about 15 seconds or less what some of you were doing when Jesus first called you to believe in him mm. and why did you follow Jesus you may want to type that there and type it in maybe we can we can share that as you as you do so um, what were you doing when you first heard about Jesus and decided to follow him what, what were you doing well I was actually it's a strange time we'd had a, a raw time we'd had two and a half years moving five times and we'd emigrated and come back to England and turned up in Salisbury and I was actually a busy mum with two young children a three-year-old and a one-year-old probably like any other mother, pulling my hair out, um, trying to get it all together, trying to understand what life was about. Um, and I joined a ladies Bible study group, which I didn't even know was a Bible study. I thought it was a chit chat and a bit of coffee. Um, but it soon Great. transpired. And yeah, that's, I was actually at one of those groups when God really met with me and um, told me he loved me. That's wonderful. What a beautiful story. That's mm. great. Um, I was a teenager. I'd grown up in a Christian okay. home and mm. uh, I heard the gospel message many times, but on this particular occasion it just connected with me and I just knew mm. that I had to respond. Mm. So, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, yeah I was uh, confirmed at 14. That was a very um, amazing experience for me. Um, I didn't really understand it all at age 14, but it was really in my mid 20s uh, after having met this young lady over here. And we were at a wonderful church called St. Aldate's in Oxford. And just hearing amazing preaching week in week out uh, that I came to realize that God did exist that Jesus was a real historical figure and uh, and that's really where it all started mm -hmm. okay so I wonder what about you where were you uh, when you first believed in Jesus all right the pond from which the disciples were going to fish was the world you might say that this was the private lake of the devil or so the devil thought but Jesus knew he had many fish who needed to be netted into the kingdom of God. And I think that's the point, isn't it? I mean, I love that phrase. Jesus knew he had many fish who needed to be netted into the kingdom of yeah. God. So when he said, I'm going to make you fishers of men, he was looking for mm. um, other disciples. Mm. Yeah. All right, so now um, we're going to switch to Matthew chapter 10 now. Uh, so you want to look up Matthew chapter 10, verses 16 to 22. That's the next section. And... Uh, we read here in Matthew chapter 10, verses 16 to 22, we have a portion of Jesus' instructions to the 12 disciples, whom he also appointed as apostles, before he sent them to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Read the passage aloud and have the group circle every instruction that Jesus gives them, 
and underline everything that is going to happen to them. So I'm going to read it slowly and see if we can work out whether it's an instruction mm -hmm. or whether it's something that's going to happen to them. So underline what's going to happen and circle the instructions. Here we go. So Matthew chapter 10, starting at verse 16. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. I think that's something that's going to happen to them, isn't it? They're going to be sent out as sheep. Okay, so you want Is to that not an that? instruction as well? That you not send as an instruction? I think it's a statement saying this is what's going to happen oh, to okay. you. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. okay, so I send you out as sheep uh, in the midst of wolves, so underline that. So, be shrewd as serpents and innocent as doves. So that's the instruction. That is, I think, is the yeah. instruction. Right. So you circle yeah. that. Okay. The whole thing? Mm -hmm. yep. Right. Verse 17. But beware of men. What would that be? I think that's another, that's instruction. another instruction. Yeah. For they will hand you over to the courts and scourge you in their synagogues. Mm. I think that's, that's something that's going to happen, happen to them. To them yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Okay, so underline, underline that. Yeah. They will hand you over to the court, scourge you in the synagogues. Verse 18, and you will even be brought before governors and kings for my sake. Something's going to happen to them. That's going to happen to them again. Underline that. Uh, as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. Verse 19, but when they hand you over. Okay, so we're going so to be handed over. Yeah. Do well. not worry about how or what you are to say. Oh, so that's an instruction. Mm -hmm. I think it is. And not to worry. For it will be given you in that hour what you are to say. Great. So, so that's so going to happen. Gonna, so that's going to happen. That's going to happen to them. Gonna happen yeah. To them. yeah. And we're going to go over these mm. um, statements in a minute. It will be given you in that hour what you are to say. Okay. Uh, verse 20. For it is not you who speak, but it is the spirit of your father who speaks in you. Verse 21. Brother will betray brother to death. Is that not a happen one? That the spirit of will speak in you. No? I think, I think the, it is going to take place. You're not speaking. The spirit's going to oh, speak okay. um, within you. If, if that's something that you feel it's important, yeah. you can underline that. That's fine. Yeah, I was just thinking that that's not the usual mm. happening. Okay. A uh, brother will betray a brother to death. That's definitely that something's going to happen that's to you. That's something, yeah. yeah. And a father his child. Yes, mm -hmm. that's also. And children will rise up against parents yep. and cause them to be put to death. So I think all of those things yeah. in verse 21 are going to happen to you. shocking when you read that. Mm. Verse 22, you will be hated by all because of my name. Something's going to happen That's going to happen to them. They're going to be hated yep. by all. But it is the one who has endured to the end who will be saved. So you'll be saved so if you saved. endure. So that's yeah. what's going to happen to you. Mm. All right. Okay, going back to the questions. Um, first question. Does what Jesus said sound very appealing or attractive? What's your mm. reckon, Not particularly. <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't know if I fancy all the things that are going to happen to me. Yeah, no, it doesn't. It not, doesn't. not as an initial look. It doesn't, no. does it? Okay, the next question is, what are the things that can or will happen to them as his disciples talk about what you have underlined so okay. go, go through yep. the verses follow through with us what are some of the things that are going to happen to the disciples of jesus so so they're going to be sheep in the midst of wolves which is that sounds pretty dangerous actually doesn't sounds a it bit scary yes okay. and, and they would have understood that that wasn't a pleasant experience mm. i presume they were used to seeing sheep in the midst of wolves yes okay. i mean the closest we can get is well Sadly, mm. I don't know whether it is sadly or not, I mm. listen to Radio 4 Farming today every morning and oh. a regular topic <laughs> is about dogs worrying yeah. sheep. Oh. Um, this morning it was okay. about dogs worrying deer actually, okay. so um, any other Radio 4 listeners Fair from enough. farming today, but it's obviously yeah. a dangerous environment, yeah. so they're going yeah. to be sent out um, as sheep in the midst of wolves. The other, the other thing that occurs to me, it may have also been an alien environment, even though we assume they would have been used to this, they were fishermen, they weren't farmers, mm. so yeah. that's just... A sudden yeah. thought. It's a, it's basically out of their comfort zone. Mm. Out of their comfort zone. Yes. Okay. Okay. What's the next thing? That, Seventeen. That, that may happen to them. Underlined. Um, they're going to be handed over. Mm. Handed and the over. courts to be scourged to in, the, in the synagogues. The yeah. And scourged in the synagogues. Yeah. So, so this is a, a place of uh, a judicial place, isn't it? Yeah. So the courts. So they're going to yeah, be handed to be over judged. to the legal system. They're going mm. to be judged. But also, the synagogues mm. was the religious place wasn't it yeah. so even before their religious leaders they're going to be scourged 
handed over. Yeah, mm. what, what, what you'd normally associate with a place of safety mm. as well mm. is actually going to be a place of danger. Mm. Mm. So that's yeah. kind of scary. Never noticed that. Okay, so verse 16, we've seen uh, some things there. Verse mm -hmm. 17, we've seen. Okay, what about verse 18? What else is going to happen to them? This is when they're being brought before authorities, aren't they? Mm. Before governors and kings. Mm. kings. Yeah. yeah. It, it just is, just reading it very quickly, it just almost says, right, you're out of your comfort zone, you're going to be judged by your own people, and you're going to be judged by the leaders of your country. Mm. You know, it's like, there isn't going to be a safe place for you. Mm. Interesting, isn't it? Mm. That's right. So governors and kings, mm. would That's be, your if political we've had the legal system, system mm. in the courts, we've had mm. the religious system in the synagogues, mm -hmm. what would be governors and kings? Political. political. That's the political bit. Political, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Yeah, okay, so what else do we learn about what's going to happen to them? Well, we just know generally that they're going to be handed over in verse 19. However, um, we do know that it will be given to them in that hour what mm. they're to say, and I think um, we'll talk about more about that later. Okay, so but, but verse 21, I think, is quite disturbing, mm. isn't it? Mm. Um, brother yeah. will betray brother to mm. death, and a father his child, and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. Mm. Yeah. I'm actually going to write in, nowhere is going to be safe. No. So and if you think about it, you know, we know from some well-known Christian charities, Christian mm. Society Worldwide and others, mm. that this, verse 21 is happening. Mm. It happens. Yeah. You know, we, we know that people who turn to Christ, their family turns on them, they're thrown mm. out. You know, mm. we've, we've read stories, we've, read, um, we've heard... Um, Heard things on the news. And it happens in this country. It's it's not. You know, it is completely um, true that in countries we, we're very fortunate that we don't have the levels of persecution that yeah. other countries do. But yeah. within a home setting, it can be dreadfully painful. Mm. Yeah, dreadfully. I, painful. I was very insulted when I became a Christian mm. by people that were close to me. Yeah, it was. It's a real. It's a reality. We just mm. pretend it's not happening. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and there may be some of you watching here for whom that's that's been the case. Mm. You know, that has been you've lived through that. Um, I mean, this is obviously. Um, yeah, I mean, as a teenager, when I gave my life to the Lord, it was very difficult going back into that school setting because I had to mm. make a stand for various things, mm -hmm. and I was ridiculed, um, not only by the the children but by the teachers at the time. Really, and um, and so this is. Mm. I mean, it's important that we learn these things that we know about it, mm. but. We've got some assurances, haven't we, in just a yeah. moment. Yeah. What are, what are Jesus' instructions? So, bottom page five there. What yes. are instructions? Verse 16. Look? First place we circled, we're to be shrewd mm -hmm. as serpents and innocent as doves. So we've got to have wisdom, haven't yeah. we? Yeah. Um, but be innocent as well. Okay, what else? Yeah. Beware. Mm. To basically not trust anything mm. as it looks or as it sees. Yes. Um, yeah. Just yeah. be warned. Mm -hmm. well, um, do not worry. In verse 19. Isn't this, this, is, this is the positive, isn't yeah. it? This is the lovely, encouraging yeah. bit. Jesus says, don't worry about <laughs> how or what you are to say yeah. because it will be given to you in that hour. I mean, It does make me laugh, though. Those moments make me laugh. You just told me I'm just going to have to be aware, watch out, mm -hmm. or but don't worry. <laughs> that, it, it, it only appears in the Bible in that order, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Okay, so we've seen what's going to happen to disciples and we've seen Jesus' instructions. Next question is, are there any assurances or promises of help? We've just seen one. Mm -hmm. In verse 19. Verse 19. Any others? Hmm. There's where, where he says, um, it will be given to you what you're going to say. So mm. obviously there's an assurance. And yeah, verse 20, we began to pick that up. You, yeah. you made a comment about that. That's, is the that something that's going to happen to you? Yeah. Mm. The spirit of your father who speaks in you, I love that, for it is not you who speaks. Mm. Which is which goes with the do not worry, you can't really read the do not worry without that bit. No, that's right, um, because he's the one that's dwelling within us, yeah. so he's the one that's going to be leading and speaking. And as a parent, I think you do that with your children, don't you? You go, don't worry, because mm. I'm actually going to pack mm. your lunch for tomorrow. Mm. It will be there, or your shirts will be ironed. or mm. So a heavenly father... Yeah. Um, it's the, the spirit of your father. Yeah. 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 Mm. Because I suppose you can't imagine how you're going to respond before mm. you actually get there, but actually it's once you're there, mm. that is the promise, that yeah. is the assurance. Yeah. God, you're going to speak through me. And I think in day, day to day, I, Zach, my, my youngest, used to panic about what was on for dinner at school, for lunch. 
And every day I used to have to say, don't worry, it's all, it's all in hand, you're mm. going to be fine. I'm your mum, I know. How do you know? Because I'm your mum. And I just feel, I get that sense that God's saying, because, you know, he's your father, he's going mm. to be there for you. And it, that, that, in a sense, that goes back to being sheep. Sheep mm. need to be completely looked after. So mm. we're to be, we're going to be sent out as sheep. Mm. Um, so mm. we need to have that same that reliance shepherd. on our shepherd, yeah. our Father in heaven. Yeah. But I think the other promise is that um, at the end of verse 22, there is salvation. We yeah. will be saved. Yeah. And so there may be dreadful persecution here on earth, or there may be real challenges at home. But actually, mm. the reality is our home is in heaven with the yeah. Lord. We have salvation. And mm. it's, it's the one who has endured to the end, and it has endured the perseverance mm -hmm. in being a disciple. Mm. Okay. So, next question is uh, Would you say that Jesus was upfront <laughs> about what it means to follow him? What would you say to that? Was he upfront about it? I think he was. I think he was too. <laughs> I don't think you could spell it out any clearer. Mm. Yeah, and the question is why? Why, why was Jesus upfront about, about this? I think, what, what would you think about that? I think it's it's um, to prepare and mm. to warn and so that you go into this relationship with your eyes wide mm. open. Yeah. Um, that there is a cost. I mean, that's the, that's interesting, isn't it? That's the title of the book. Yeah. There is a cost of following Jesus. There is, yeah. Uh, and he never promised that it was going to be just a bed of roses. Yeah, and it's a call. It, it's it's a call to to follow. It's a call of obedience. It's not a call to success. Mm. And I think that's what he spells out. He says, I call you, but I don't call you because you're just going to succeed. I call you because I call you. Mm. Um, it's something God's doing in me at the moment, to just be obedient. Mm. And even when I've been obedient and it hasn't gone the way that I thought it was going to be, or going to go, God said to me, but I never said, be obedient mm -hmm. because you're going to succeed. Mm -hmm. I just said, be obedient. be obedient. So immediate obedience is is my latest little mantra. Wonderful. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, next question. <clears throat> if these things were going to happen to you, would you still want to <laughs> follow Jesus? So, so having gone through the list of all these things that are going to happen, don't look too good, um, would you still want to be a follower of Jesus? I have to say yes. I mean, yes, and I hope so. Because the reality is I don't know what it's going to be like until I'm in those situations. But I have experienced some challenges mm. um, and it's all worth it in that I'm forgiven I, mm. I'm in a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and mm. you talked about your family um, you you had some um, real kickback from your mm. family when Absolutely. you became yeah. a believer um, and the initial kickbacks I think they come in waves I think as well and I was, I was just realizing it is Matthew 10 we're reading they have had they have been in relationship with Jesus for a while um, at that point have they not or have I got that wrong well, do you know, that's a really good question. If, to be able to work out whether they've been in relationship with Jesus for a while, we'd obviously need to read the first 10 chapters of Matthew. But Luke, <laughs> did you know that Luke before. is a chronological yeah. gospel? Yes. Yeah. So you can always compare. So we don't know at this point, do we? Well, well we know chapter that. 4, he called, he called them chapter he 4, called we know them. chapter 10. Yeah, that's I correct. just want to say something here, which is interesting. I'm reading a book at the moment uh, by Richard Wernbrandt called Tortured mm. for Christ. And I tell you what, I have been extremely um, challenged mm -hmm. by his perseverance, his endurance, under extreme pressure uh, from communist Romania. It, this is back in the 1960s now, many, many mm -hmm. years ago. Um, and actually, when he, when he got free, doctors checked him all over and said, how you survive what you've been through, I have no idea. So clearly, um, you know, he, the Lord was with him in and through that. So... We don't want to underestimate what people are going through mm, no. to be a follower of Jesus. Yeah, exactly. um, we think it's, you know, in different parts of the world, but increasingly in our country, I think um, that is happening. Mm. So, uh, do you realise that these things are happening to many Christians around the world today? And it's happened in every age, beginning with the first 12 of his mm. disciples. Okay. Yeah. Quite That's a challenge. Mm. All right, we're moving on to Matthew chapter 10, uh, verses 24 to 31 now. So we're going to read these verses and we're going to mark every reference to disciple, including pronouns, the same way that we mark follow in the previous passage. So that's uh, with an arrow going to the right. And we're going to mark every reference of the word fear with a series of short little lines over the word. If you can imagine that, little, mm -hmm. um, little lines over the word fear. So here we go. Matthew 10, 24 to 31. A disciple, disciple. Mm -hmm. is not above his teacher. His 
the mark his there, nor a slave above his master. It is enough for the disciple, disciple. that he, he the, the disciple, disciple, become like his, his, his teacher, <coughs> and the slave like his master. If they have called the head of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign the members of his household? Therefore, do not fear, fear. Mark the fear, them, yeah. for and there is nothing concealed that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be known. <coughs> what I tell you, you, the disciples, yeah. in the darkness, speak in the light, and what you, you yeah. hear whispered in your, your ear, ear, proclaim upon the housetops. Verse 28. Do not fear, fear those who kill the body but are unable to kill the soul, but rather fear, fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a cent, and yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your, your father. But the very hairs of your, your head are all numbered. So do not fear, fear you, you are more valuable than many sparrows. Mm. Okay, back to the questions related to this passage. First question is, what did Jesus teach them about a disciple's relationship to his master? And which verse do you see that on? Verse 24, he says, he's not above his teacher. Mm. And it's enough, I love this, verse 25, it's enough for the disciple that he becomes like his teacher. Mm. That's, that really is yeah. lovely, isn't it? Yeah, so, so the, the there's a standard to attain to, which is lovely. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and in a sense, it's a real privilege that if we're followers of Jesus, mm. we're called to be like him. Yep. I like that. Okay, so verse 24, 25, we see that there. Yep. All right, next question is, um, what were they not to fear? Okay, so we've got And then what were they supposed to fear? So the opposite. So if you've got one of the books, you've got not to fear and to fear, and you can mm -hmm. write down the different things as we go through. So the first question is, what were they not to fear? It says them. Yes, and that's really interesting because mm. the them is, actually it takes us back to that previous passage, I think, mm. actually, um, the people that Jesus is talking to um, or talking about. All so right, yeah. all the ones that are going the to be the, the courts and the, courts and the, and yes, and the synagogues, the exactly. politicians. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we're not to fear these people. Yeah. We're not to fear them. Okay, so not to fear them. Anything That's else I'm not to fear? Uh, yes, verse 28 as well. We're not to fear those who kill the body, but are unable to kill the soul. Mm -hmm. hmm. That's an interesting one, isn't it? Because we, we fear man so much, isn't it? With words that they speak mm -hmm. and things that they say say to us and um and yet that's such a clear directive mm -hmm. of just do not fear man don't fear him but yeah. fear god but fear god yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely okay. so actually the two fear bit then mm, is the 28b we yeah. are to fear rather fear him who is able yeah. to destroy both soul and body in hell mm. so you're right susan so we're yeah. not to fear man but we're to, to yeah. fear our creator our father in heaven mm -hmm. he's the one with the real power okay mm -hmm. All right, let's, um, let's move on to the next question. Top of page eight, if you've got the book. What are the reasons that they should not fear? Mm. What can the disciples be assured of? Again, I think we can go back to where we, we identified not mm. to fear. We're not to fear because Jesus says there is nothing, this is verse 26, mm. there's nothing that is concealed that will not be revealed or mm -hmm. hidden that will not be made known. In other words, God knows it all. He sees it mm -hmm. all. Yeah. So... Yeah. Although we may be going through those difficulties, mm. we're not going through them alone, and we're no, not going no. through them without God mm. actually being aware of them and seeing. Yeah. Um, and in His way, in His time, mm. He will take care of that. Yeah, we've got a recent situation actually that really ties in with us at the moment. Um, and the verse that God's given us is that you will not go through the hour of trial. Mm. And we forget that that is the promise. You know, we, we know we're going to have a tough time, but the ultimate hour of trial, we just home in on the earthly hour of trial, mm, don't mm, we? But mm. the, the ultimate one, we won't go through. Mm. So, mm. Yeah. 
Okay, so. Um, and I think also um, there's a there's a, a, a an insight box of sorts here, yeah. isn't there? There's a. Um, mm. um, I suppose you're going to read that now. I'll read that in a minute. Yeah. Mm. So anything else they can be assured of. It says, when answering this last question, make sure the group looks at verse 29 very carefully. Mm -hmm. Don't miss the words, apart from your father, which means without his knowledge and therefore his permission. Um, so therefore, in other words, it says in verse 29, are not two sparrows sold for a cent, and yet not one of them will fall to the ground mm -hmm. apart from your father. In other words, yeah. without your father knowing. So that just can backs up what he said, there's nothing yeah. that's hidden, yeah. that, that will not be revealed. Jesus, or our Father, yeah. knows everything, and not one sparrow will fall to the ground. Yeah. And so therefore, he knows, our Father knows everything that we're mm. going through. Mm. He sees it all. Mm. Um, and then that's the wonderful reassurance that the very hairs of our head are all numbered. He knows us that intimately. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many hairs you shed every day, Susan, but I seem to be losing number. Oh, uh, it's an age thing, I think. Yeah, but so um, our hairs are all numbered. And so mm. our value is worth more than a sparrow, mm. very much yeah. more than a sparrow. It's just so reassuring, though, isn't it? Because you, you can doubt, can't you? You step out, you do something, and you think, oh, Lord, did I miss you? Mm. Did I get that wrong? And this just tells you what you can't because he knows it all. He's got yeah, it all in yeah. hand. And if he's asked you to do something, that's all part of it. Mm. Yeah. That's right. Okay, well, I think we are... I'm just going to read the insight box and then uh, we're pretty well out of time, I think, for the study for today. But it would be good to um, just give you an opportunity to write any comments that you have or ask any questions relating to this passage. Um, I don't know whether you're going to have an opportunity to right any experiences probably not but uh, let me just read the insight box and then give you that opportunity uh, to to ask any questions or comment so the insight box bottom page eight says this Beelzebul is a name of satan some accuse jesus of being from the devil satan if they accuse jesus of this then the disciples could be expected to be accused of the same and that came because in verse 25 they said, if they've called the head of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign mm. the members of his household? So yeah. we are to expect that kind of um, maligning, mm. suffering, yep. challenges. Um, we're to expect it, but we will be given what to say. Mm -hmm. Our Father does know, mm -hmm. and he is there with us. Yeah, yeah. I actually experienced that, experienced that this week. I had a phone call from somebody that wasn't that virile, but somebody accused me of something, and um, and God just and it was completely unfounded, but God gave me exactly what to say, really? and it was such a moment, and I thought, mm. wow, I put the phone down, and went, I didn't realise I had that in me. <laughs> so and that's the Lord. Yeah. So Martin, have we got any? questions or any comments about this because it's quite a challenging passage isn't it I guess people might have to have time to process it um, so looking at chapter 10 um, the question that we have here is to what extent is this specifically for the 12 because at the beginning of chapter 10 it says he calls the 12 and he gives them uh, power to heal and power to cast out demons to what extent do you think that this is really just a, like when you take on these powers and you do all these amazing things for me, mm -hmm. these things will happen. And to what extent is this for all of us? Mm. Mm, good question. Yeah, that's an interesting one, isn't it? Because Jesus is training up his disciples to go out and to be him in the community. Mm. Yep. And it and didn't just stop with the 12, did no, it? No, exactly. We do tend to read this as this is us. Um, it's an assumption we all make, isn't mm. it? But so the reality was they, God was, or Jesus was preparing them mm. for the mission field, if you like. Yep. And so what application has that got for us? And I suspect mm. that similar. it's the same, isn't yeah. it? Because we are called mm. to be mm. disciple makers. Mm. We're di we have been made disciple makers and we're called to make yep. disciples. Yeah. So In that great commission bit, go mm. make disciples. Make disciples. So this is the instruction manual. And also, we see an element in verse t uh, chapter 10. Uh, he's saying what's going to happen to them. Yeah. And I think... I think it, um, we can legitimately, and, and looking at passages that we'll look as we go through the book, legitimately say that Jesus was warning them about mm. what was going to happen, mm. and also it's a warning for us as well. They were mm. called to follow him. This is what's going to happen if you're going to follow Jesus. Mm. If we're going to follow Jesus, then these are some of the things 
depending on our context, is going to happen to us. Mm. So I think it is a, 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 a legitimacy mm. to say that. Totally, say that. yeah. And, and we see that. That's the reality. Yeah. We see it as we, as we uh, look around the world and see what how Christians yeah. are, <coughs> are treated. I know from my time in Iraq, when I was in Iraq with the British Army there, um, some of you may have known the vicar of Baghdad, uh, Canon mm. Andrew White, and he tells stories of um, being Muslims coming to faith in Christ mm. and wanting to be baptised, and he will say to them, you do realise that if you're going to be baptised, you, you could well be killed for this. And they would say, yes, we realise that, but we want to be baptised anyway. Mm. And so uh, we see that um, today. Mm, we do. Mm. And again, I come back to the verse, it's verse 24 of chapter 10, mm. a disciple is not above his teacher nor a slave mm. above his master, it is enough for the disciple that he become like his teacher. Mm. And um, because Jesus was maligned, yeah. because Jesus was persecuted, and ultimately I know he, he paid for our sin with his yeah. death, but the called, and we're going to look at this later, um, about the greater commitment, the greater mm. cost of, of mm. being a disciple. Yeah. Anything else, Martin? Um, one last question. Um, in Matthew 4.22, we see um, disciples immediately responding to Christ's call. Um, and it's, they can seem to leave their livelihood <laughs> and their whole family behind to follow after his calling. Mm. Uh, do you think that's something that we should do in the modern age, mm. or is this something that's really reserved for ancient times when it was easier? Mm. Perhaps mm. Mm. I think this is this is where I'm at at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, not just the fo the following <clears throat> bit obviously happened years ago for me, but I think it's a constant follow me, follow me, because mm. Jesus is always on the move. Um, and I would, I would say there is blessing in immediate obedience. That's what I would say to, to the viewers, because I have been Mrs. Procrastinator for many, many years. And, and, and sometimes I, I go through seasons of immediate obedience and then I procrastinate. But I think immediate obedience is what he's asking of them and, and they step up. Mm. They do. I think we need to look at the whole gospel mm. and see how their relationship with Jesus grew and developed and actually, mm. um, because they followed him immediately, but um, we also know from other scriptures they tripped. <laughs> that actually they continued. Yeah. they continued. They yeah. continued to do the fishing. They continued yeah. to do certain things, but they were following Jesus, and their commitment grew mm. in in what um, how they responded to him. Yeah. Um, and also, I'm just thinking of maybe there may be some Christian women that are, mm. are watching this, and uh, Scripture is very clear about how, as Christian women, if you're married to a non-believer, mm. or you come to know Christ. Um, you don't just leave your husband and walk out. No, no, that, that's absolutely. not what it's all about. So it's not saying leave your immediate situation per no. se. Um, so I think we need to look at the rest of Scripture and really understand exactly what Jesus is saying. And the follow instruction may not be get up and leave your boat. I mean, mine hasn't been. So mm. We've been in, in this place a long time now. Mm. But I think somebody mm. explained it to me in, in, in a way. They, they took their ring off. I can't take my ring off. It's too tight. But, and they mm. put it in their hand. And, mm. and when Jesus says, I want you, mm. we, we offer ourselves to him with an open hand and mm. let him take it yeah. or leave it, yeah. I think. Yeah. So. I think what's interesting, what you raised there, Martin, um, is the fact there must have been something unbelievable about Jesus Mm. For them to respond in that manner, to mm. to um, for him to say that follow me, and immediately they yeah. do, and so you know that's a big commitment, isn't it, to, mm. to leave their leave the fishing and, and and follow him. So there must have been something that they saw in Jesus, the way mm. that he uh, spoke, um, that they said, you know what, I following wonder. Jesus mm -hmm. is going to be far more valuable to me, um, and that's what I need to do. But, but going back to that question that we had, what were you doing when Jesus called you? Yeah. And so as a 14-year-old teenager, I continued going to school. I continued mm. to be part of my yeah. family. But when I heard that, the gospel message again, that Jesus Christ had died for me, I immediately followed him mm. by getting up out of my chair and responding. Yeah. And I just wonder whether that's what we're talking about, really. It's about that heartfelt response to him, mm. giving up kind of, if you like, your own understanding of how good I am or mm -hmm. my own salvation but just mm -hmm. say I want Jesus and so I yeah. followed him and I think it's talking about that yeah and I think just just to add to that the, the following for me was the, the case that they followed and like you said they followed immediately but then they end up in the boat with Jesus so the difference is that now their life continues but Jesus is in that life mm 
Mm. And I think that's my immediate obedience bit. I think we tend to leave Jesus out of the equation, or we, we can be called, to, you know, not called, drawn to leave him out of the equation. Mm. So I think Jesus is constantly saying, can I get in your boat? Mm. Yeah. It's, it's, it's another way of saying, follow me. It is. So he says, follow me, and then they end up back in the boat later on. So, yeah. Well, I think we ought to just pray, and, um, and then I think that's it. We're out of time, yeah, actually. I've so. just got one more thought. The, the Jesus called these 12 to be fishers of men. And if you think about it, that was 2,000 years ago. Think about it. For those of us that are followers of Jesus today, we are some of the fish that mm. have been caught as mm. a result of those, mm. the obedience that you were talking about yeah. of those 12. And it may be that you now, having watched this, you want to have a discussion yourself about following Jesus, how you're getting on with following Jesus, maybe some of the struggles that you've had with following Jesus, and take an opportunity maybe to pray for each other and to encourage each other. Mm. So we just thank you for joining us today and uh, encourage you just to keep on studying God's word. Look forward to seeing you in a week's time. And uh, if there's anything we can do to help you get to know God better, if there's anything we can do to equip you with the skills and tools to study God's word, please be in touch and uh, put your comments at the end. Um, see you again next week. Thank you for thank watching. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.